to talk more with us about Europe's debt crisis and the health of the global economy is Leon Pereira of Spire Research and Consulting. Good morning to you, uh, Leon. Uh, Good morning. Lehman moment has uh, been averted, at least temporarily, but does that mean the danger of Greece exiting the uh, Eurozone has gone away altogether? Well, I think the uh, imminent danger of a messy Greek exit uh, has been averted for now for at least uh, the next three months. The good news, which the markets needed to hear, is that the Greek people have stepped up. They've shown the political will to go back to the mainstream to uh, support mainstream parties like New Democracy uh, and PASOK and to stay within the euro area. They've shown that they recognize any return to the drachma will be a complete and total disaster for Greece. The bad news is that they want a renegotiation of the bailout uh, package from Europe, but we should recall that that was to be expected. And even though Mrs. Merkel has uh, opposed any renegotiation of terms, I think the socialist uh, victory in France uh, does indicate a new mood in Europe that is more pro-growth. And within that uh, climate, they will probably be able to make some marginal renegotiation that would save the day. So in short, I think uh, we're out of the woods. No imminent danger just for the next three months. I'd like you to say not out of the woods yet because uh, one election doesn't immediately solve uh, Greece's problems. But any prospects out of its uh, de, facto, uh, de facto bankruptcy? Well, the problems of Greece are very fundamental, very structural, so there will be no immediate turnaround. Uh, the best case scenario for Greece will be a long, hard slog, really for the next few years, as they work within the bailout package and the austerity uh, parameters to try to get growth fundamentals back. That's really the best case scenario. The worst case scenario would be a deep economic collapse in Greece, like what the Soviets went through in the early 90s, followed by a decade or more of economic limbo, such as what uh, Japan went through after the bursting of the bubble. So no immediate overnight solution for Greece, certainly. Uh, as it stands now, do you think the debt crisis is going to uh, further engulf the larger economies of Spain and Italy? Well, uh, I think there's cause for concern in Spain. Obviously, their borrowing, cross, uh, borrowing costs have, have crossed the 7% uh, uh, psychologically important threshold for 10-year uh, bond yields. That's bad news. I think there are two reasons for cautious optimism, though. Uh, firstly, you have the positive election results in Greece and also in France, which show that there is this uh, new uh, pro-growth uh, mood in Europe that may be more conducive to finding some kind of structural solution to the European uh, problems. And secondly, I think there is the fact that Spain is uh, essentially too big to fail uh, as a country. And if there was a serious prospect of a messy exit for Spain, I'm sure the Germans would really pull back from the brink uh, at that point. I think what we see in Europe now is uh, the beginnings of some new resolve to maybe tackle some of these problems structurally, to come together and look seriously at things like debt mutualization, uh, guarantees of bank deposits, uh, and so on. Basically, bolder integration measures. And the pressure will certainly be on Mrs. Merkel and the European leaders uh, at the up upcoming uh, EU summit uh, at the end of June. I think there are better prospects that they will move in this direction now than they were uh, before uh, these recent election results. Uh, you talk about the mood being uh, improved in, in Europe overall, but uh, economic growth still appears to be lost in a fog of uncertainty. Can the U.S. put its economic house back in order, do you think? Well, the prospects for growth in the U.S. are certainly down. I think things are not looking uh, uh, too good there. The indicators uh, have weakened considerably. Unemployment is inching up now, so the trend has been reversed. Retail sales are coming down. Retail sales are king in the U.S. Industrial output is falling. So there's no doubt that the outlook for uh, growth in the U.S. is going to be lower, uh, below the 2% uh, mark than many thought uh, it would be before. So not looking too good there. And is the Fed going to downgrade its growth forecast at, uh, at its meeting this week? I think the Fed will, will definitely downgrade its growth forecast on the basis of the weak U.S. data that we're seeing, as well as the weak data that we're seeing pretty much uh, across the world, even uh, in, in China and in Europe and so on. Uh, last time the FOMC met, uh, the growth forecast was upgraded to 24 to 2.9% for GDP. It will definitely be downgraded this time. So I guess the question is, uh, is this going to clear the path for a third round of uh, bond buying, uh, QE3 we've been talking about? Well, I think that would be a too drastic a step at this uh, stage. Uh, quantitative easing carries its own risks. It's politically sensitive in the U.S. right now. We might see an extension of uh, Operation Twist. Uh, but I don't think they would take such a drastic step as QE right now. The Fed would want to see the real trend line in the data, whether the U.S. data will continue to be weak for the next few months. And they will also want to see how things pan out in Europe. 
Uh, so I would say not right now, but a very real possibility of QE happening in Q3 uh, in a few months' time, uh, possibly uh, after August. Uh, last question for you then. Uh, when's China going to come up with a fiscal package to help uh, stabilize a uh, sharply slowing Chinese economy? I think the short answer to that is uh, very soon, almost immediately. The Chinese are under a lot of pressure. They have a Communist Party Congress coming up at the end of this year, which will see a leadership transition. They have to be seen to be doing something with the economy before then. Some say uh, stimulus measures have already begun because of announcements of big state investments that go above what is usually to be expected at this time. So I would say some stimulus is definitely going to be in the works in June or July. It will be of a smaller magnitude than the four trillion uh, RMB that we saw uh, in 2009, which was seen to have stoked inflation and possibly corruption as well. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for that, Leon. That was Leon Pereira of Spire Research and Consulting, and that's a business wrap from me for now. I'll be back again in half an hour's time.